Imagine waking up someday in a world in which AI has made 10 scientific discoveries in one paper. And this AI is able to recursively improve itself and make better scientific discoveries in the future. Well, you don't have to imagine it anymore. That's Alpha Evolve. So what is Alpha Evolve and why are you going to hear about it a lot in the coming days, weeks and possibly years? Alpha Evolve is an evolutionary coding agent that substantially enhances capabilities of state-of-the-art LLMs on highly challenging tasks, such as tackling open scientific problems or optimizing critical pieces of computational infrastructure. So, before getting into how Alpha Evolve works and what does this mean for the broader AI industry, let's talk about some shocking discoveries. And I know we all hate the word shock, but I promise, in this case, it is appropriate. In the world of computer science, few problems are as fundamental as matrix multiplication. The training process of AI is almost entirely multiplying matrices, and it happens billions of times in training, and even in inference time. In computer graphics, 3D transformations, rotations, and scaling rely heavily on matrix operations. So any improvement in matrix multiplication efficiency can have massive downstream effects on the entire field of computing and AI potentially reducing energy consumption, training time, and computational costs. Alpha Evolve just beat a 56-year-old algorithm on matrix multiplication. And that, I would call shocking. Keep in mind, because this is such a fundamental problem, scientists have tried for decades to squeeze every drop of efficiency out of these algorithms, and they couldn't do better for 56 years. It is fascinating how Alpha Evolve managed to find a novel way of looking at the problem to improve it. If you remember from high school, in order to multiply matrices, you calculate the dot product of each row and its corresponding column. So for the simplest 2 by 2 matrix, you have to do 8 multiplications. And for a long time, it was just something you had to do. Until in 1969, German mathematician Volker Strassen used a clever procedure to produce some magical cancellations that showed you could multiply 2 by 2 matrices performing only 7 multiplications. This was a big surprise and it opened a whole new area of research. Later, people managed to prove 7 is actually optimal for 2 by 2. But anything beyond that, even for 3 by 3, which is laughably small, we don't know the best way to do it. And computationally, there is no hope to explore all the possibilities. So for 3x3, three three, we've proved we need at least 19 multiplications. And our best algorithm requires 23. But when it came to 4x4 four four matrices, we essentially made zero progress. And the state of the art is just doing a Strassen procedure twice which is 7 times 7, 49 multiplications. Alpha Evolve managed to break that record after 56 years. But the way it did it is actually very interesting. Most of the time, entries of your matrix are going to be real numbers. But Alpha Evolve realized if we use complex numbers, which have real numbers as a subset, we can get some magical cancellations and reduce the number of multiplications to 48. A lot of researchers would probably assume using complex numbers would make the problem more difficult. But Alpha Evolve somehow realized that's a good approach. 4x4 four four is very small, but just as a reminder, we can do this recursively for larger matrices. In fact, the larger the matrix, the bigger the effect. Because now instead of 49 times 49, you have 48 times 48 for 8x8 eight eight matrices. And the gap keeps growing the bigger the matrix. Alpha Evolve was also able to improve part of Gemini training by 20%, which resulted in 1% overall savings in compute and shrinked months of engineering to days. This deployment marks a novel instance where Gemini, through the capabilities of Alpha Evolve, optimizes its own training process. We might have had different ideas of intelligence explosion, but this already is a virtuous cycle. Alpha Evolve relies on Gemini as its core idea generator and evaluator. So by improving Gemini, it is improving its own ability to improve Gemini better, and so on. Even beyond that, based on the paper, Alpha Evolve has already made contributions to TPU design, which is Google's dedicated AI hardware. And it has improved Google's data and computer infrastructure. So Alpha Evolve is improving itself on multiple levels, and these things compound. We're gonna talk about the most important loop at the end, but let's see how it works first. The way it works seems simple, but it is very clever how they manage to orchestrate researcher AI interactions. The system has four main parts. The prompt sampler, the LLM ensemble, evaluators pool, and program database. 
the prompt sampler is researcher's request. What should be done? And the AI actually prompt engineers itself. So the researcher is kind of meta prompting the AI. And the AI re-engineers the researcher's request to prompt itself. LLM's ensemble is a combination of LLM models that work together. The user can customize it, but for the paper, they have used Gemini 2.0 Flash and Pro. Gemini 2.0 Pro leads the research with directional decisions, and Flash comes up with a breadth of ideas to be explored. You might have noticed that this isn't even the Google's latest model, and the gap between Gemini 2.5 and Gemini 2.0 is pretty wide. I can't wait to see what the newer models are able to do with this. Authors have already said more capable models have a sizable impact on the quality of outputs. So one thing I can say specifically that is particularly exciting to me about Alpha Evolve is that it does get this uplift from improving the, the base language model. In Alpha Evolve, we do see this and we actually have a, like a quantitative confirmation again in the ablation. The next part is the evaluator's pool. This is the secret sauce. It contains the code to evaluate the results. This is the part that helps to automate the entire process, leveraging the AI's ability to produce lots of theories and evaluate them against some function. The hard part is that this isn't a true or false operation. The system is able to recognize the more promising paths and eliminate the bad ideas in an evolutionary process. It also manages the resources by starting cheap and then allocating more and more resources to the more promising ideas. And finally, the program database is the code base that the AI is working on and improving over time. The researchers can manually highlight what parts of the code might need improvements or the AI can decide by itself. So I kept the best part for the last. Here's a natural next step. Can AI somehow distill the capabilities of Alpha Evolve into the base model? like Llama Behemoth training smaller models. This is a new pipeline to generate very high quality synthetic data. And this is the biggest loop. The capability of the base model is somewhere, but then this system makes it even better through so orchestrating this like test time compute pipeline and actually so much better that you can make like a new scientific discovery. So it raises the natural question, like can we somehow distill this improved capability back into the base model? So that's something that you would get if you were to close the reinforcement learning loop. It's not something we have done with Alpha Evolve, but that possibility is, is clearly on the table. Alpha Evolve is able to allocate a lot of compute to a very challenging problem and output a drop of gold that could be distilled into the base model. Remember, AI is all about who can use more compute more effectively. That's the whole game. If you could spend the entire compute budget of Google DeepMind to just design a new practical fusion reactor, you would happily do it. Alpha Evolve at the end was applied to 50 open scientific problems. And in 75% of the cases, it rediscovered the best current solution without knowing it in advance. But it also improved the currently best known solution in 20% of them. 10 new discoveries in one paper. The fun part is that the paper is not even about the discoveries. It is about the AI that was able to discover them to show its capabilities. By the way, I'm kind of confused what is Google about to announce in their I.O. conference this year. They have released everything already. My name is Puria and I don't know, bye.